Hallelujah. And getting ready for this week, I had one message, of course, and the Lord just kind of... <laughs> and we want to welcome all of our Believers family online. We just want to thank everybody for all their giving, their tithes, their offerings. You know, your time, your energy, it's just so precious to us. And we're in this together as a family, all your prayers. We are definitely have, there's so much in our future, so much to look forward uh, together. And I'll tell you what, I'm really fired up about the, the message. And as I was praying this week, <laughs> I kept getting the word stale, stale, stale. And I'm like, okay, well, that's nice. You know, and he's like, no, because I got a great message right here. Lord, I'm building and no stale, stale. You know, there's a difference between a stale Christian and a fresh Christian. And so and when it comes to communion, too, when we, when we receive the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, the Lord's blood and the bread and the body, you know, sometimes we can get too comfortable. And we can get kind of like, okay, you know, that's old. That's, we're just going to, yeah, just, you know, whatever, just give a show or whatever. But no, we are here to honor the Lord. And a, a believers online, grab some elements today. Pause it right here. Grab some elements today, whatever it may be in the house. I've, I've done it with crackers and water, whatever's, whatever you have, because it's of the heart. Grab those. But we're going to be talking about <laughs> stale versus fresh today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's get started. Let's do our confession. Let's get going. Say this after me. I'm quick. I am sharp. I'm bright. I'm good looking. I'm strong. I'm healed. I'm very rich and I'm a major blessing. You know, receiving communion is part of our inheritance. Receiving communion is part of our inheritance. And you know, I, I, I got the bread and we're going to talk about, you know, the fire of God. We're going to talk about water and fire. But say water and fire. Water. We're going to talk about water and fire. And as, as I went down to uh, D'Angelo's this morning and got a fresh loaf of bread, I walked into that place and I was like, man, it smells good in there. And I went there just for a loaf of bread so that we can share and receive communion. But that the Danishes, oh my God. The sweets, the other types of bread, and I was just like, what? I've, I haven't heard of this kind of bread before. Kind of like when we go up to Bob's up in Los Alamos. Bob's in Los Alamos. If you're ever around the, the Southern California, Bob he used to work for Sony Pictures, did, did stuff for Seinfeld and all kinds of, of things, but he, he's an incredible baker. And you go in there, and, and I saw this big round loaf one time, and it had olives all through it. And I said, what is that? And he said, that's our famous olive loaf. And I'm like, I need one of those. So as I, when I walked in this morning, I got our, our fresh bread so that we could receive communion. And just the odors, the aromas, the presence of fresh bread just filling up. And as Christians, sometimes we can become stale. I'll bring it on, Pastor David. Sometimes we can become stale. And so people don't smell the aroma of love and peace and victory and faith and just honor and loving God and all that around us. Sometimes us, us as Christians, we, we're, we're kind of like, you know, we're kind of like this a week old. You know what I mean? Maybe some people are like a year old and they're getting stale. And so in, in studying this out, you know, I was just thinking about different things because, again, communion is our inheritance. This is our inheritance, guys. And we receive it with respect. We receive it with honor. And so getting ready for it, I'm like, okay, Lord, we have this loaf of bread. But, you know, chefs know how to revive a stale loaf of bread. We're talking about water and fire today. We're talking about the blood of Jesus today. We're talking about stale versus fresh. Amen. I thought I had a pair of glasses on me when I came in. So I'm like, is this still on me? Because I went to a big pair of glasses. Like, just you're looking at the glasses, not looking at me. But listen, um, so when, when chefs, and most of them, they, they, they give away their stale bread. But when they give their stale bread away, they say, just add water to the crust. Water to the crust and put it under the fire and bake it. So if you bake this, if this thing was like 
three days old, because you know how French bread is? The thing about French bread is you got to eat it now, because then it gets kind of like, you're like, bam, bam, you can use it as a hammer, you know what I mean? So what, what they do is they'll, they said, just not the inside, but the crust, just put some water over the crust, put it in the oven at, for 10 to 15 minutes for 350 degrees, and boom, you've got some fresh bread. Well, I think a lot of us need the water and the fire today as Christians. Come on. Amen. So this is fresh. Everybody knows, and I'm sure you have some fresh stuff out there too. I wanted to make sure you had fresh bread today through communion. And I just, that place was just amazing because I walk in, I'm I walk in, I get out of the car because I parked right next to the curb so I can leave fast. I park right next to the curb and I got out to D'Angelo's and I walk in, I'm, I'm walking to the door going, I'm only going to get a French, I'm just going to get a loaf, one loaf, one loaf, one loaf. Well, I open it up and there's some people waiting and I'm like, <sighs> and that's what people need to know about us as Christians. Our aroma is love. Our aroma is peace. Man, I'm so peaceful around those people. Man, they're so loving. They're so giving. They just gave the car away. They just did this. They just did. They're just so wonderful. That's the way we need to live. And so this is our inheritance. And I hope I get to my notes today. But uh, this is our inheritance. So as we receive communion today, and I got some grape juice from Israel. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, if you can only smell, hallelujah, it smells so good. So we, got, so we got fresh communion today, amen? Before we've taken those little things that take an hour to open up, you know, and all that. And I was talking to the Lord that week, and he goes, just do fresh. And I'm like, everything's fresh. We're going to do fresh communion. So stale versus fresh, amen? Water. So you have water and fire. That's what revives the bread loaf. Well, it's the same for us. We need God's water. With the word of God, and the Bible talks the word of God is water. It's cleansing power. Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 says it cleanses, it cleanses, it washes us clean. I was just talking, before I get to the slide, I was just talking to our, our friends who are, are, are givers into our church, and they have a, a, a gallery here in Montecito, and, and they have paintings and everything, and we walked in to visit them. We haven't seen them in a while. And they go, there they are. There's the pastors. When we had the floods, they came. No one could get down there. There's the pastor that walked through all the mud. And, and, and I said, yeah, I got pictures of me walking through because they blocked off Montecito, downtown Montecito, so I had to truck in. And I am not lying. The mud was this thick. It was up to my waist. Most of the time it was up to my knees, but there was some times up to my waist. And guess what happened to Pastor David? He's walking down the street on the sidewalk, which he thinks is the sidewalk. <laughs> Amen. I, and I know, I know Montecito so well. I know this city so well. I know this sidewalk. I'm walking down the sidewalk, and all of a sudden I step off the curb, and I fall into the mud. I needed to be cleansed. I took a picture of myself. I got like mud everywhere. I'm like, I got to take a picture of it. <laughs> and anyways, I went and checked their gallery out, and they were thankful for that. But listen, sometimes as Christians, we got to have the cleansing, washing of the water by the word. And Paul says it best. He says, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27, Christ loved the church. We need to stop right there and go home. He loves us. Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean. Well, how does that happen? Washed by the cleansing of God's word. So washing by the water of the word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. I don't know about you, but I'm trying to get rid of some wrinkles. How about you? Hallelujah. So I woke some of you up or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault because we're getting in the word. That's why when you get done with your devotional times, you know, when you get into devotional time in the morning, you'll just read a little something. You'll be like, ah, oh, that was good. You just got washed. You just got cleansed. Just picture David walking down that street of mud and all of a sudden stepping off and falling into the mud and coming out like, you know, totally different looking. <laughs> But instead, I had to come home and take a shower. But we are washed by God's word. And we know in John chapter 1, it says Jesus is the word. Wash us, Jesus. Wash us. Wash us, Jesus. Wash us. 
Watch this, Jesus. Watch this. We're reading his word. We're reading about him. He also talks about he, no, I'll just go to the verse. Forget it. I just tell him a big story here. John 14, 4, 4, 14 says, this is Jesus. But whoever drinks of the water, we're talking about Jesus is the word and the life. Go off in a lot of different tangents there. I will give him, will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up in eternal life. We know that this water is the life of God. We know this water is the word of God. And the word of God is the life of God. Amen. Bring it on. <laughs> I'm just having fun up here. All right, so we have the water. Put a little water on this. What do we need next to make it from stale to fresh? Fire. fire. Now, there's a lot in the scriptures about fire. I mean, you can spend weeks reading about, probably months, reading about the fire of God. Fire is important to us as kingdom Christians, as kingdom believers. We have to have the fire of God. I can't do what I'm doing without the fire of God. What would you do without Jesus? What would you do without the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you every day? Woo. Hallelujah. Fire is important to us. I like John the Baptist. When John the Baptist was asked about Jesus, he said this. John answered their questions. John is answering the questions. Hey, listen, what about the baptism? You know, la, 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 la. John answered their questions by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon. Everybody say coming soon. Who is supreme, greater than I am. So here he's on the water and they're talking about, you know, you the, you the Christ, you the Messiah. And he's like, no, 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 no. John answered their questions by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is supreme. Everybody say supreme. supreme. The supreme one. The supreme, that word greater that he says is supreme one. He is supreme. Jesus is our supreme one. He goes on to say, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave or untie the straps of his sandals. Now listen to this. Talking about Jesus, the one coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire in the Aramaic. It's God's pure light. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, which is God's pure light. John the Baptist was a true prophet who pointed others to the Supreme One, the one he said is coming, who's going to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, God's pure light. Today we worship the Supreme One. Yes. Our inheritance right here. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. The Supreme One. The Supreme One. The supreme one is Jesus Christ. He is supreme. There is nothing above Jesus Christ, and there never will be. <laughs> the baptize of the Okaya, Moshaya, the baptize of Moshkala Vakoshkea, the baptize of Bokostan Vokomashidiaha, the baptize of Mamokasida Vachakaya. God's fire cleanses us. It changes our lives forever, giving us this new power to live for God and deal with everyday issues of life with success. This water of the word, this Holy Spirit fire gives us success in our lives. Not have preached about this. No more stale bread for me. No more stale bread for me. Come on. Your pastor is wild. He's weird and wild. I like what Shekinah Glory said over us years ago. We first got married and we were in this meeting and big meeting thousands of people. And she's like, David and Carol Joy, come up here. And we're like, because <laughs> I mean, we don't want to, we're, we're the last people that want to be seen. We want to like, <laughs> and we came up with a different kind of anointing. It's going to be different. It's going to be unusual. It's going to be different. Well, you know what? It's okay to be different. We got to be us. I think the church has been so 
that we just need to be ourselves and be real so the people out there can see that we really mean it and that Jesus is everything to us. Amen? Hallelujah. No more stale bread or leftovers for us. We are fresh. Amen? Amen. Say, the water and the fire belong to me. God's word belongs to me. The Holy Spirit belongs to me. I'm going to say that again. The Holy Spirit belongs to me. The Holy Spirit belongs to me. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. We have the fire of God. Say it. We have the fire of God. And we're not afraid to share it. And spread it. And help this world. In Jesus' name, amen. That water and that fire every day rejuvenate us. They cleanse us. They refresh us. And I love what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.7. This is the scripture. I was kind of meditating on it this week because it talks about the Holy Spirit. Most people are just, eh, they confess it. But this really talks about the Holy Spirit. And I was, I was kind of meditating on this verse. And you know, when we have fear in our lives, fear is not of God. Adam was, and Eve were never created with fear. Jesus never brought fear into this earth, right? He never brought sickness into this earth. Come on, preach the fire down, Pastor David. He never brought poverty. He became poor so that we would be rich, the Bible says. But he didn't bring poverty. He said, you're all going to be poor now. Be blessed and be poor, all of you. No, he didn't do that. It's the opposite of what the devil tries to put on us. We are increasing. We are growing. I said, we are increasing. We are growing in our lives. We are increasing and we are growing in our lives. I'm going to get this out. We are increasing. We are growing. We are increasing. We are growing. We are increasing. We are growing in our lives. Hallelujah. So here, Paul tells 2 Timothy 1.7, the spirit God gave us does not make us timid but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The Holy Spirit does not make us timid. He helps us, and he loves us, and he gives us power, and he gives us self-discipline and self-control. He's just amazing. I don't know if I've ever moved so much in the pulpit before. (laughs) I hope you guys come back next week. We'll, We'll be back here with a more subtle... Relaxed message for you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. So communion is so important. It's our inheritance. We're going to receive communion right now, unless the Lord has something else on me. But I'll tell you what. I just, I just been just being. I'm just so filled up with freshness, freshness. And then that when I said that, koshadivi akaya, and he kept saying stale, stale, stale. I'm like, hello. I'm not going to be stale. I don't want to be stale. I shouldn't treat this as stale. I, this is fresh. This is life giving power for us. He's given us the bread, his body. Thank God he gave us his whole body so that we can have a new body. He gave us his blood. So our blood now is like God's blood. Oh, come on people. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So hallelujah. I don't even know where to unhook right here. Glory to God. God is so good. He's so good to us. Get off your butt and just start doing stuff for God. Yeah. Yeah, God. Amen. It's time to stir ourselves up. Put some, put some, you know, if you look like, then put some water on. Get in the word. It's put it in the oven. Get some fired up. I don't like going through trests and trials and, oh, Lord, take away these burdens. I like what one missionary said. You know, Americans, Americans are like, Lord, lift the burden off of me. Please lift the burden off of me. And you know what we're doing? He said, you know what we're doing in Africa? Lord, make our backs stronger so we can do more work for you. Make ourselves strong. Make us stronger so that we can carry this burden for others and get this thing done. There's a saying that's been rolling around in me for the last few years. Until it's done. It's everything about us. We're doing this until it's done, 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 until it's done. done, We're going to do this gospel. Come on. I don't even know if I want to watch myself on this one. This is pretty wild. (laughs) Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you for this communion. 
We're going to be passing out the communion elements, uh, and you guys can go get yours. Father, we just thank you for these communion elements that we're all gathering together, Father, and we just thank you for this inherent right to receive communion. Jesus, you said, do this in remembrance of me, and we receive our communion today and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to have Pastor Carol. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We receive this fresh communion today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can, yeah, everything's, just, everything's clean and fresh. So that's good. Thank you. Why don't you stay up here, sweetheart? Father, we thank you for this fresh communion today. We are so grateful for everything you're doing for us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. In your word, it says that Jesus served his disciples the bread and the cup, the blood and the wine. Oh, Jesus, we can be there right now. We're there right now, the Last Supper with you and all the disciples. Our hearts are there with you. You're so amazing. Thank you, Jesus. You left this wonderful gift of salvation with us so that we can have new life in every way. New life for us and for our generations after us. We're just so grateful for it. Thank you for this feast, this constant supply of life. Anytime we feel down, we can receive this gift of communion, this gift with you, this water and this fire, this blood and this bread, your body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to read a scripture and receive communion. Hallelujah. Glory to God in Mark chapter 14. Verses 22 through 24. And as they were dining, let's just picture ourselves being with Jesus right now in that room with all those disciples. And as they were dining, Jesus took the bread and blessed it. He broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, receive this. It is my body. Let's take and break this bread and eat it in his honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your life, for the body that was broken. Some people might be watching or here and they, they need to be reminded of what Jesus did for them. He came to this earth as the son of God, born as a baby from a virgin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah lived on this life, did miracles. He was persecuted and died a death he shouldn't have. It was wrong, but he did it all for us and he was nailed to a cross, but then the good part comes. After he was nailed to the cross to take all of our sins, sicknesses, disease, and death, he rose from the dead so that we can rise with him and be with him. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, just ask right now, come into my heart, Jesus. I can see you're real. Make me new. I give you my life. Thank you, Father. And then Jesus, after the bread, he took the cup. Then taking the cup of wine and giving thanks to the Father, he declared the new covenant, the new promise. It's a new promise for us with them. And as each one drank from the cup, he said to them, this is my blood, which seals the new promise, the new covenant poured out for many. Jesus, we receive this as your blood is sacrificed for us. Take and drink now in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just listen to this song and hallelujah. Glory to God. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's lift our hands one last time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this inheritance. Thank you so much that we can come to this table and be refreshed, be rejuvenated, be strengthened. You are so in love with us, and we are so in love with you. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen.
Hallelujah. So this new covenant promise is a better covenant. Through this covenant promise we just partook, God freely gives to us his forgiveness, his life, his salvation, all eternal blessings. My gosh, we have so much to look forward to. So again, this is not a stale promise from God. You guys, if anything you learned today, how to revive bread. <laughs> but hopefully this is a good illustration to revive yourself. And just remember that God is there with you. He's helping you every day. And you know, sometimes when I struggle, I'll, I'll, I'll just get alone. Nobody usually knows. I'll get alone and I'll receive communion with him. Just to love on him. And cherish him because this is an inherent gift and we all appreciate. It. Amen. Well, glory to God. That's it for today's service. Believers Online family, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your faithfulness. If you've watched this this far, glory to God. Share it with others. Hallelujah. And until next week, we're going to say for the kingdom of God. If you're here in Santa Barbara and you're not here with us, please come visit us. We love to see you and we'd love to give you a hug and really strengthen your lives. And you're, just, you're going to love our family here. And we love you so much. So on the count of three, let's say for the kingdom. We end every time we come together for the kingdom because we do everything for Jesus. On the count of three, one, two, three, for the kingdom. God bless you online family. We love you so much. Just go for it this week. Get with him even more. Get fired up, get watered up, and go. In Jesus' name, we love you.